Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, comedy film from 2020, titled OK Madam. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2009 in Mongolia, two agents from the North Korean Special Forces, Magnolia and Chul Sung, are breaking into a hotel filled with enemy agents to steal some intel. While Chul Sung covers her back, Magnolia searches the room, only to be interrupted by a call from her father telling her to get out of there because some men are after her and she can't trust anybody. But before he can say more, he's shot by an intruder. Chul Sung finishes taking care of all the enemies and goes looking for his partner, but when Magnolia sees him, she remembers her father's words and shoots him before escaping through the window. Years pass and it's now 2020 in Seoul, South Korea. Mi Young wakes up early to open her twisted donut store and sells it all fairly quickly, allowing her to close the shop in good time to visit her husband Sok Hwan. He's a computer repairman working in his own shop while drinking tons of juice, he's bought a bunch of little bottles because there are special prizes on the caps. When Mi Young notices this, she scolds him for having wasted so much money, although she does like the sound of getting a new laundry machine. While Sok Hwan helps his latest client, Mi Young decides to have some juice as well and is shocked to find a surprise under the cap, the first prize, a trip to Hawaii. At first, the couple celebrates their luck, but their mood changes when they return home. Mi Young has decided they aren't going because they can't afford to spend money on a vacation and close their shops for a whole week. Instead, she'd rather sell the cap on the internet and use the money to buy a new laundry machine. The other person in a bad mood is their daughter Na Ri, who arrives at home as Mi Young receives a text with bad news. Na Ri has hurt a fellow student again. She gets yelled at and spanked for it, causing her to cry and confess she's tired of being made fun of for being the only kid in class that doesn't have a phone or goes on vacation. Hearing this makes Mi Young feel very bad, so after putting Na Ri to bed, she has a talk with Sok Hwan and accepts to go to Hawaii so their daughter can have something nice in her life. As Sok Hwan celebrates the decision, he accidentally kicks the old laundry machine and makes it work again. The next day, the three of them get their passports done. Meanwhile, a mysterious woman that also has a passport and a plane ticket ready receives a call that tells her it's time for her to get moving. In another part of the city, Chul Sung also gets a call telling him Magnolia has resurfaced after 10 years and that she'll be going to Hawaii soon. His orders are to capture her alive. When the day of the trip finally comes, Mi Young still decides to work, that way she can take some extra money with her. They take the airport shuttle instead of a taxi, so they arrive late at the airport where other passengers for the same trip are gathering. Chul Sung, the mysterious woman who is keeping her face hidden, and Special Agent Kim Harem and his gang, who are here to capture Magnolia too. Luckily for the family, they arrive right before the gate closes, so they are allowed to board. Not only that, but since there are two remaining business class seats, the clerk upgrades their tickets for free. Mi Young and Nari take the business class seats while Sok Hwan stays in economy. The plane is filled with interesting people like Stuart Hyun Min, who thinks keeping an eye out for suspicious behavior and keeping an eye on everyone's safety is part of the steward mission, Congressman Jang Pil Jun, and a nervous man that is flying because his boss has sent him so he takes a bunch of pills to keep his fear under control. Once the plane takes off, the enemy agents begin walking around the plane to see if they can find Magnolia. The mysterious woman notices this and goes to hide in the bathroom while Hyun Min brings some snacks for Mi Young. He accidentally drops the nuts when he's about to serve them, but Mi Young catches them all by using outstanding reflexes. This makes Yun Min think she may be a spy or a national security agent. Meanwhile, Sok Hwan befriends fellow passenger Buk Kyuk Sung, who is traveling alone to visit his daughter and granddaughter, even carrying a teddy bear with him to gift them later. Back in business, Mi Young is having stomach cramps, so she goes looking for a bathroom after finding her husband and telling him to keep an eye on their daughter. The first restroom is taken by the mysterious woman, so Mi Young goes farther into the plane to look for another stall and comes across the special agents, who haven't been able to find Magnolia and pretend they're waiting in line when they see Mi Young coming. While she finally finds an empty stall, Harem goes to talk to Chul Sung, telling him they can't find Magnolia but they haven't checked the business class yet because they don't have access to it. Chul Sung thinks they can't wait anymore, so he gives orders to start the operation. Hyun Min overhears one of the men receiving such orders, but when he tries to tell the other steward, she doesn't believe him because he's always playing pretend to be a spy. The enemy agents hijack the plane then. Chul Sung takes a steward as a hostage and goes to see the captain to make him change the destination of the plane. Meanwhile, his men search the plane so they can put every passenger together in the same sector. The clumsiest one of the gang is in charge of checking the bathrooms and misses Mi Young because she doesn't answer when he knocks. Next he checks a room at the back and ends up locked inside when the plane does a sudden turn and pushes a cart in front of the door. Pil Jun believes they're here for him because he's an important politician, but the agents don't care and send him to sit with the rest of the economy passengers. The South Korean National Security Service receives the news of the hijacking, but for now they stay calm because there's an agent on board. Unfortunately, that agent is the nervous man. He's taken so many pills that he's fallen deeply asleep and won't wake up even if shaken, so the agents just drag him with the others as if he was a doll. 
Chol Sung notices the mysterious woman in the crowd and makes her uncover her face only to discover she isn't Magnolia. She's on Sarah, a famous actress that is trying to travel without getting any attention. In the meantime, the National Security Service believes they've found the reason why the plane is being hijacked. Magnolia defected North Korea and came to the South pretending to be Chinese and has been categorized as a person of interest since then. There's one detail they overlooked though, she got plastic surgery to change her appearance and start a new life with a new name and face. It turns out, Magnolia is now me young. When one of the men hears her in the bathroom, he tries to capture her, but her fighting instincts kick in and she quickly knocks him out. While wondering what to do next, she hears Chul Sung's voice on the speakers asking for Magnolia to reveal herself, so Mi Young begins remembering how her life quickly changed over 10 years ago, shooting Chul Sung and escaping, meeting Sa Kwan and having their daughter. She doesn't want to lose her family, so she decides it's time for her to fight again. While she sneaks around trying to find a good entry point to execute a plan, Sa Kwan decides he also must do something to check on his wife. After leaving his daughter with Kyuk Sung, he sneaks out of the economy sector while the men go around retrieving everyone's phones. He finds a drop laptop and takes it with him before going down a hatch that leads to the server room. There, he connects the computer to the system and hacks his way in to gain control of the plane. Meanwhile, one of the men takes Hyun Min to the steward area, commanding him to find and give him the passenger list. Hyun Min notices Mi Young is hidden in the ceiling, so he takes extra long to find the list to buy time until Mi Young sees an opening and jumps on the agent to knock him out. Mi Young then asks for the passenger list, which Hyun Min has been hiding in his sock all along, to check it and burn it in the microwave. Next, she dresses up as a steward and receives Hyun Min's smartwatch for communication, since he'll be going to the back room to find the tasers they keep there. Mi Young enters the first economy area that is now empty except for one of the agents, but one man isn't an issue for her and she quickly knocks him out. Afterward, she enters the sector where all the passengers are being kept, and since her daughter is there too, Mi Young takes a random person's sun visor to cover her face before beating up the agent watching over that area. Hyun Min reaches the server room and finds Sa Kwan sending messages to the National Security Service about the situation so he tries to ambush him, but it turns out Hyun Min is a secret agent too and easily stops his attack. He's frustrated because the higher-ups don't want him to get involved since he's retired, so Hyun Min lets him know about the other agent on their side and takes out his phone to call his smartwatch. Because Hyun Min likes to play spies, the voices get distorted through his app, so Sa Kwan and Mi Young don't recognize each other while they talk. The chat doesn't even last that long because Mi Young hangs up as soon as Sa Kwan begins scolding her on the proper way to deal with a situation like this. Afterward, he overrides the plane controls to put it on autopilot and fix its destination while Hyun Min finally reaches the back room and finds the teasers, he also finds the man that locked himself earlier taking a nap. Chul Sung, who has been in the cockpit keeping the captain at gunpoint, notices the change of direction and checks the security cameras. As soon as he sees Sa Kwan messing with the controls, he rushes to capture him. Meanwhile, Harem finds Mi Young and begins fighting her. He's a much better opponent than his men so it takes Mi Young longer to knock him out, but after a couple of close calls and losing her mask, she manages to defeat him. Her victory doesn't last long though, Chul Sung shows up with Sa Kwan as his hostage and tells her her husband has always been a government agent. As shocked as she may be, this still isn't enough for her to let him get hurt, so she stops the knife Chul Sung throws at Sa Kwan, making him believe she's been under national security protection all this time. Chul Sung ties the couple up and sends them away to be locked up, which means they have to walk through the passenger area. Na Ri sees them and begins crying, so Kyuk Sung gives her the teddy bear to distract her. Chul Sung still notices this and comes to check on her because perhaps she could be a useful hostage too, but Na Ri lies and says on Sarah is her mother. This causes a commotion around the crowd since the actress never mentioned a child in public, and on Sarah tries to deny it, but Na Ri comes closer and whispers a request for help in her ear, so on Sarah accepts to lie for her sake. In the back room, Mi Young is worried that her marriage is a lie, but Sa Kwan wastes no time in telling her the full story. He used to work as agent ages ago and he was assigned to surveil her, but he's now retired. He fell in love with her the day he was following her around and accidentally got harassed by some bullies, Mi Young had saved him and shared her food with him, and Sa Kwan knew then that he didn't want this to be a job anymore. He doesn't care that she's Magnolia or that she used to kill people, all he cares about is that she's his wife and the mother to his child. Such unconditional love makes Mi Young cry. Back to the passengers, one of them finds the knife Mi Young had saved her husband from and uses it to free people's hands, but they can't do much before one of the agents comes back in. The real surprise however, comes when two passengers suddenly stand up and beat the agent up. These two guys are under Harem's orders, and they join their leader in the cockpit, where they kick Chul Sung and tell him they're in charge now. Unlike Chul Sung, who wants to take Mi Young back to the government officials, Harem wants to sell her to the highest offer. And while Chul Sung wanted to leave with her and let the plane do its thing, Harem wants to take her with him with the parachutes but also make the plane crash because he doesn't care about civilians' lives. Chul Sung tries to stop him but Harem's men quickly take him down and carry him away while Harem forces the pilot to make the plane descend at a high speed. 
While all the passengers begin to panic, Chul Sung is taken to the back room with Mi Young and Sa Kwan. Mi Young takes the chance to question his intentions, so Chul Sung proceeds to explain his mission. His government wants him to find Mi Young and take her back because there's a group of men that need her to access the vault with the nuclear weapons her dad had made, since the lock can only be opened by her iris. She isn't sure if he can trust him after he tried to shoot her 10 years ago, but Chul Sung says that wasn't true, he was on her side and he had been backstabbed by the others like it happened here on the plane. Their talk gets interrupted by Hin Min, who suddenly enters the room through the ceiling shaft. With his help, everyone is released and gets back on business. Sa Quan returns to the server room to regain control of the plane's autopilot mode and stop it from falling while Hin Min turns off all the lights. Then, Mi Young and Chul Sung go back to the passenger area to take on Harem's men. The fights are fairly equal, but whenever the bad guys would gain the upper hand, the passengers would help our heroes by hitting the men with whatever object they could find nearby. Thanks to everyone's support, they defeat the men and capture Harem. Now the whole family can reunite, but the trouble is far from over. Pretending to comfort her, Kyuk Sung gives Na Ri the teddy bear and grabs her as hostage. Then he shoots Chul Sung before confessing he was the man that killed Mi Young's father, and he will kill her daughter as well if she doesn't come with him. Sa Kwan tries to hurt him with one of the tasers from the plane, but it doesn't work, so Kyuk Sung shoots him as well. Mi Young admits she has no other choice than to accept his terms, so she hugs Na Ri goodbye before putting on the parachute. Kyuk Sung forces the plane door open and Mi Young gives Na Ri a signal to throw out her teddy bear. She had whispered these instructions to her when she hugged her, and now, she pushes Kyuk Sung out too as the teddy bear explodes at a good distance away from the plane, taking Kyuk Sung with it. Thankfully, Sa Kwan is alive after all thanks to a bulletproof vest Chul Sung had shared with him before they separated to execute the plan, so the family reunites once again for good this time. Speaking of Chul Sung, he grabs the parachute and, after wishing the family to be happy and have a good life, jumps off the plane to return so the authorities can't get him when they land. All the enemy agents are tied to their seats and the National Security Service is contacted to inform them they're okay now. The pilot receives orders to return to South Korea to process what happened, but Sa Kwan can't accept this, he wants to go to Hawaii. Pil Jun doesn't approve of this idea and tries to pull rank, but at that moment, Hyun Min finds the taser on the floor and while checking it out, he presses the button and accidentally knocks Pil Jun out. On Sarah reminds everyone that if it wasn't for Mi Young they'd be all dead, so the captain changes his mind to grant her wish and changes the course to Hawaii, telling the government they're low on fuel as an excuse. As soon as they arrive in Hawaii, the family goes to have fun on the beach, and Sa Kwan gives Mi Young a ring so they can renew their vows. He also admits he's been saving money for 10 years for this trip and the winning cap had been faked by him. Furious, Mi Young chases him around the beach for having spent so much money while Na Ri relaxes under the sun. Meanwhile, the plane has been emptied except for one person, the nervous man, who is finally waking up and finding hundreds of missed calls and messages asking him to take care of the hijacking situation. A couple of weeks later, TV cameras show up at Mi Young's shop. To thank her for saving the plane, she's being gifted a free trip to Disneyland. This excites Na Ri, but her parents freak out because they don't want to get on a plane anytime soon. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.